tonight, I really sense the tender heart of the Father in the area of praying for prodigals. Tonight, I, I, I sense a couple things that the Lord wants us to pray for because the whole goal of, of moments like this is for the tenderness of the Father's heart to open up our eyes to the way he feels. And you know, if you're someone that is close to a prodigal, somebody who's walked away, there's nothing that makes you feel more helpless, and hopeless at times than to see them keep going deeper and deeper into the pig's pen. And you can think to yourself, nobody feels the pain that I feel about this. But the Father would have you know tonight, Father, we're talking about God who's the creator of everything, but yet is moved in his emotions. He feels it far deeper than we feel it. The good news is that he's the God who doesn't just stand back as an observer. He's the God who steps into Egypt, wherever that is. It's not just for us. Our prayers partner with God for those who are at this moment prodigals. At this moment, their eyes are blindfolded by the God of this age. At this moment, their heart is hardened by whatever it's hardened by. At this moment, they don't know it, but the enemy is drawing them like on a leash deeper and deeper into bondage. But in spite of all those things that they can't see, in spite of all the things that their heart can't feel, in spite of the strength of the enemy's hand to pull they're leashed like a slave deeper into the cage. There's a God whose heart is stronger. There's a God whose eyes see further. There's a God who's able to cut the cords, break the chains. There's a God who has already put the key into the cage and thrown it wide open. And there's a God who says to every mom and dad in this room, listen to me. There's a God who says, a father who says to every mom and dad whose son or daughter has walked away and seems like they're a long ways off. I'll partner with you. God says, I'll partner with you because I've already stepped into their prison cell and I'm already moving behind the scenes. So tonight, listen, before, uh, before we get, before we allow our our energy to, and our faith to, to build. I just sense this. I sense that there's even a parent that's in this room. I think it's a, a mom. You have a son who's so adamantly opposed to following Jesus that it's become a point of contention. There's a mom you, you have a son and there's another mother, you have a daughter who is adamantly opposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And throughout this fast, you've been praying for them. And you actually today, there was a moment today when you thought to yourself, God, you nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. And discouragement wanted to come and build a nest in your heart today. But the Lord wants you to know today that what you can't see in your, in, with your natural eyes there's already a storm on the horizon, a storm of God's goodness that's building momentum in your son and in your daughter's life. I don't know who you are. There's a husband who's separated. Your wife has walked away from you. And your, your greatest cry is, God, bring them back to me. And God wants you to know, before I bring them back to you, I'm gonna bring them back to me. I'm gonna bring them back to me. There's some siblings in this room, young people, I don't know who you are, college-age students, but you have siblings that are far away from the Lord. And the Lord wants you to partner with him 
over this next year to pray for them because I believe breakthrough is coming. I believe that part of the rain that we're singing about is God has looked on the drought of a generation and he's allowed season after season to scorch the earth. There's riverbeds that haven't had water flowing through them and it's nothing but parched, cracked ground. But I believe that the Lord hasn't abandoned it. He's just positioned it. And rain is about to fall. And when rain falls, rivers flow. And I believe that part of the rain falling is there's an anointing for God to bring a prodigal generation back into the house of God. The first fruits of revival is going to be the prodigals back in the house. The first fruits of the revival that is to come is you better put the placemats out on the table because your sons and daughters are coming home. There's a place at the table. There's a place at the table for sons and daughters. Put the silverware out, put the glass out. You might as well kill the fatted calf. You might as well tell them to get the barbecue pit ready because there's a party that's about to be thrown in the house of God. God's about to bring the prodigals home. All over this room, if you have a prodigal, I want you to just raise your hand up. Come on, raise your hand up. If there's a pr- look at that. Come on, we better build bigger buildings because when God answers every one of these prayers, there's gonna need to be room at the table. Come on, I want you to just right now pray. And listen, if you pray in the spirit, I want you to pray right now in the spirit. We're gonna do battle. We're gonna do battle right now for prodigals. We're gonna partner with the Father heart of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for prodigals. We pray for them. We know them by the name prodigal, but you know them by their name. Lord, you know them by the name that you've written on a white stone from eternity past. You know the purposes that you have for them. You know the callings that you have on them. And you know the lies that they believed the day that they packed up their suitcases and they left home. God, you know the lies that they packed into their bags. And right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we partner with you and we say, Lord, bring them home. Break down every lie. Expose it for what it is, God. We pray that you would break every chain, every shackle. Lord, every demonic spirit that is attached itself to them that says they're mine. Right now, we just remind remind every enemy and every evil one, they don't belong to you. They don't belong in your house. There's a place at the Father's table where they've sat. There's a place at the Father's table where they've heard the old, old story. There's a place at the Father's table where he's prepared a feast in the presence of our enemies. There's a feast that he has prepared in the enemy's presence. And God, we say, send them home, God. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Fill up the riverbanks. Husbands and wives coming home sons and daughters waking up and saying what in the world am I doing here how in the world did I end up in this place I'm a son of God I'm a daughter with an inheritance I believe I belong in my father's house Lord let them come to their senses in the name of Jesus come to their senses in the name of Jesus Come on, Lord, wake them up from their slumber. Wake them up from their sleep, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, graves open, cell doors open, chains broken, shackles shattered, lies destroyed, eyes open, ears alert, alert, hearts soft, memories reminded, words spoken Lord bring a generation out of the grave I hear Jesus saying they're not they're not dead they're only sleeping Talitha Kumi daughter arise daughter arise son arise child arise they're not dead they're only sleeping they're not dead why do you weep Why are you crying? They're not dead, they're only sleeping. Awake! Come on, awake! Awake! Awake, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will rise on you. Jesus! Awake! 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 
right now. Prophetically declare freedom. Your words break chains. Your words open cell doors. freedom where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom where the Lord is there are no prisoners where the spirit of the Lord is there are no captives where the spirit of the Lord is there is no death Away. 